In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome, dear nation. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. Hello, Mama. Hi, thank you. All right. Um, welcome to Relationship Institute. We all know it's a place for relationships. It's a place where we learn to do relationships different. And we are purposeful when it comes to um, a relationship. We will continue our studies on the covenant. We are doing covenant and covenant and uh, um the end times, we're putting it together and seeing some things that will help us uh, be and do and be a better version of ourselves. So as I teach tonight, I expect you to take notes. I expect you to respond. As the end times come closer, one of the things I realize is that it's not time to waste time. So I'm getting I'm even stricter with my time. I'm getting very more picky with relationships, um, especially looking at what we will see tonight. It's not a time to be distracted at all, at all. Um, we are also concluding our series, The God of Mercy. The God of Mercy. I will delete, if you, one noise, I delete you. Watch me. I'm not even going to send you a message. There are people I didn't even let in. Okay, I don't want distraction. So if you're not privy, if you think it's a right to be here, I will just delete you so you know it's not a right. I don't have time for that. Um, uh, we are going to be looking at, and you cannot be muted for almost 10, 20 minutes and you're in class. It doesn't make sense. We're going to be looking at the God of mercy. That's what we looked at the whole month. We're going to be concluding the God of mercy, a series, the God of mercy, because this is the last Sunday in the month of um, April. This is the last Sunday in the month of April. So we'll conclude our series, The God of Mercy. And what we are going to be looking at is a, 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 the example we're going to be looking at will show you how powerful the covenant is. We'll bring in the aspect of the end times and we'll show you how you can, by your action, or actions limit the mercy of God from operating in your life by your choice or by your actions. So listen keenly. I expect participation. If you have a question, remember to ask the questions at the end. If you will have noise in your background, you can at least uh, um, get to a place where you're not distracting us or you can exit. We will put this on the YouTube channel. You can watch it. We don't block people on our YouTube. But if you're going to be here on this step, I'll just delete. I'm not going to make noise. I don't care if it's your child. Today, I'm focused. You'll see the reason. We are not in one of those seasons in life where everything goes. No. This is not the season at all. It's a season of diligence. It's a season of purposeful living. So if you're going to be muted, for 10, 15 minutes, I will help you out. I'll just delete you. So make a choice. You either be here or you can be in your, your, your anywhere you want to be, not, not distracting us. I don't want contrary atmosphere. I want people that are focused, people that are ready to, to learn and they are focused. If you're aware there's noise and you must connect, then I need to get a text from you and explain why you can be connecting and you're there. This relationship institute is a weekly thing in this family. One of the things I'm emphasizing and I always emphasize is that Bill is not a church, meaning it's not a gathering for everyone. It's a training ground. It's like a family. So every family member knows what their responsibilities are. If you're a Bill family member, you already know Relationship Institute. Nobody should be telling you. There's nobody here that's one week young. Everybody is one week older. So if you're here and you're not serious, help yourself. All right. We're going to be reading. So the, the, the topic tonight is remember Lord's wife. Remember Lord's wife. For those who are taking down notes, take down. Your life cannot be the same. If you listen, focus, and you be diligent, you cannot leave this class the same. Mm -hmm. All right. So I said, we're going to be combining the covenant. We're coming almost, we're not coming close to the 
of the teaching on the covenant, but we're coming to the end of the teaching of the God of mercy. Because next month, we're going to be doing something amazing that I delete on my heart. We'll be concluding that, and the focus tonight will be um, you can limit the mercy of God on your life. You can do it all by yourself. And that's what we will see. This same topic will have an aspect of the end time. So that's why I'm saying it's not a play night. If you really want to learn, you can be here and learn. If you don't, you can leave us and let me teach two people that are willing to do different. I will be more pleased with that. All right. Um, Luke chapter 17, verse 32 to 33. Luke 17. I'm not going to mute people. I'm not. And I'm not burned out today. I'm very serious. If I hear echo again from you, I will delete you. There's somebody echo has been on your background since you came in. Luke 17, 32. All right. I think I want to read the voice. So I'll go to my um, phone. I am too serious to, to entertain mediocrity and destruction. I don't do that. Not mm. not now that you see all the signs are, are evident. Luke 17, 32. I'm reading from the voice, the voice translation. Um, I'm going to read 32 and 33. It says, remember Lord's wife. Turning back is fatal for those who do so. If you try to hold on to your life, it will slip through your finger. If you let go of your life, you will keep it. Now, when you read something like this, you want to ask yourself, what did she do? So we're going to go to Genesis. Her story, unfortunately, as huge as this testimony is, negative testimony, is only in a verse. One verse. My goodness. When I saw it, I was like, whoa. There's so much to learn from this woman's life and it's only in one verse. It made me so happy because I have never wanted to live a life of a crowd. Now, this isn't a negative and you can flip it to the positive and you see the same benefit. She did one negative thing and it, it, it changed her life and her generation forever. Now, if you read just verse 26, you might miss the whole thing. So we will start from... Uh, um, I'm trying to get who is making the noise. That's why I stopped. Well, but I didn't get Genesis. How much? Genesis 19, verse 26. Okay. You're welcome, son. Now, for you to get the whole thing, we'll have to start reading from verse 17. Now, as they were leading them to safety, we already know the story. The angels, one of the messengers, gave this instruction, gave this instruction, gave this instruction. I wonder why people still show up at Relationship Institute and Bill even when I, I say it all the time. Please don't come if you're not ready. I say it like almost every time. And today, like I'm saying, I, am, I slept, I got my nap, I'm eating, I'm not fasting. There's no grumpiness here. I have just understood that this is not time for mediocrity and I cannot even entertain it. Somebody like, have you ever entertained it? No. At this point, it's gone to another level. Now run. I'm still reading the 17. He gave them instruction. Gave them instruction. Now run. Run for your lives. Don't look back or stop anywhere in the plane. Head for the hills. If you will die alone, head for the hills or you will die along with everyone else. Hmm. You would die along with everyone else. I want you to hear that. Verse 18. My Lord, no. I realize you have shown me great kindness and favor. What's that? That's mercy. You've shown me great mercy by saving my life. Remember the topic we're considering tonight when it comes to the aspect of mercy, that you can limit the mercy of God over your own life. That's what this woman did. I realize you've shown me great mercy and favor me by saving my life. But please, I can't run that far. 
the devastation will surely caught up with me and I will die anyway. Look, over there is a city. It's not too far. I could escape there. It's just a little one. Please let me go there instead. Then my life will surely be safe. Now, you remember when we looked at, uh, um, are you ready last week? We saw clearly reading from this same Luke chapter 17, that the coming of Jesus will be like the day of Lord in Sodom and Gomorrah. It will also be like the day of uh, um, Noah and the ark. The Bible says it clearly that if those days are not shortened, if those days are not shortened, even the elect, even the elect, even the elect will be deceived. Even the elect can be carried away. Because of the children of God, the pain, the wickedness that is about to be released to planet Earth will have to be shortened. Will have to. But before the shortening, look at what we ought to do. Therefore, as, as for, look, as a favor to you, this is what they're saying, look, as a favor to you, I won't destroy the little city you're talking about. But hurry now, escape there because I can't do anything until you arrive there. Mercy. Remember, we say you do not qualify for mercy. You ask for mercy. We're rounding up the series. Remember the PowerPoints. You don't qualify for it, but you can limit its application to your life by your lifestyle, by the things you choose to do. You can limit that. Look, okay, we read um, verse um, 22 already. Because of this, this little city Lord escaped to was called Zor, which means little. Now verse 23. Lord and his family arrived in Zor just as the sun was coming down. The eternal one rest sulfur and fire out of heaven into Sodom and Gomorrah. He destroyed both cities, not one. Many people think Sodom and Gomorrah is one city. No, there are two cities, company in crime. I said it in this one, many people will not make it to the rapture because of friends. Your mouth and your friends. Hmm, my dear, it's zero, so. Sodom and Gomorrah, he destroyed both cities along with the other villages and towns in the valley and all of the people who lived there. He destroyed everything. Even the vegetables were wiped out. Now, people, like now you're talking to some people, they are, they are lifting their head up. They are talking about, oh, I have my friends. I have this. When this kind of devastation comes, what friend can help you? Mm -hmm. But Law's wife, look at verse 26. But Law's wife never made it. Oh, why? It's right there. I've shared it several times. Scriptures interpret scriptures. Ah, oh, it's relationship institute. So let's be communicating. Say, say scriptures. Explain yeah, scriptures. Yeah. No, type it in. We're, we're recording, please, if you don't mind. I should have said that from the beginning. Scriptures interpret scriptures. Scriptures, interpret scriptures. All right. I think a few people that are muted has told me why. If you have been muted for more than 10 minutes, I'm going to delete you because you haven't sent any text. That's disobedient. I do not need that spirit around here. Yes, ma'am. We don't fight. We don't quarrel. I don't do drugs. It doesn't help anybody. Um, but Lord's wife never made it. She locked behind her husband. I want you to see that. She laxed behind her husband and looked back despite the messenger's advice and turned into a pillar of salt. If you have read the voice translation, you will realize that he always has something to add. He said that at Lord's wife make a fatal return. She stopped and looked back. No one knows why. Perhaps it is to mourn the past. Perhaps curiosity gets the better, God the, gets the better of her. But instead of looking ahead to her destiny, listen, instead of looking ahead 
to her destination, a place of safety and security, she turns around and looks back at what she has left behind. In that instant, as the messengers warned, she perished. All that is left of her is the standing pillar of soul. Now, this is the question. Who was she trying to deceive? Did she hear the instructions? She did hear the instructions. She decided not to do the instructions. And at the end of the day, it looks like God is bad. It looks like God is the devil in this situation, right? Because many people would say, why didn't God have mercy? You and I have read from the beginning. You saw mercy. God sent the angels, his messengers. They spoke to the family, did all the, the talking and all of that. And even at the point where they asked them not to go to a city that was built, they asked for mercy and the whole city was saved on their behalf. But guess what? She didn't even make it to the city that was closed. And the Bible is clear. The reason is simple. She was behind. Behind. And remember, we're looking at remember Lord's wife. The question we want to ask at Relationship Institute, or we are answering today, is where are you? We are still in our series. How ready are you? Or are you ready? Are you laxing behind? Are you enjoying the pain of the past? Are you enjoying the betrayers that people have betrayed you? You can limit the mercy of God on your life by refusing to progress. One of the easiest ways to be deceived by the Antichrist is not to know the scriptures. We'll be doing some series very soon, starting hopefully tomorrow, how to overcome the end times, how to make it victoriously, how to survive, overcome the end time agenda. Why are we looking at this? Because if you look in the scripture, it's very clear that those who will make it are those who knew the truth and were ready. This is scripture that tells us how the end times are going to look like. Are you taking time to study them? Or you're everywhere else. One of the biggest distractions of this time is COVID-19. Many people are focused on COVID-19. You know why that is giving us time to prepare? Hmm, I hope you heard. Think about Cain and Abel. How did they ever get to a place where one person is given the right offering and another person is given a, an offering that was not accepted? Bottom line, pride. My own way, how I want it. You see it in the word, you refuse to do it. And then at the end of the day, you want everyone else to, to buy uh, your, your, your case. What case is that you want everyone to buy? Refuser to ask for mercy. Remember when Cain fell, Cain and Abel. Cain, instead of saying, Lord, forgive me, he refused. He had arguments until he told God, he said, if you try, my punishment is too much. Don't try it. I'm like, wow, that was some boldness, right? But what about you and I today? COVID-19 should not be your focus. Your focus should be intimacy. Lord, I want to be ready. I refuse to focus on anything. Give my attention to anything more than you. Lord, anybody that's a weight, any friend, any TV show, any book, plenty of YouTube signals and doom, doom, team, Facebook. Lord, I block age i block my father my daddy you know why relationships we don't know why this woman turned back maybe she remember mama hana her friend he said i should have told mama hana it's late now she's going to die and perish with mama hana oh that my jewelry oh I, this you know the, the, um, I, I couldn't have carried much oh maybe if i run and carry that jewelry these people have been very merciful maybe if i go back and take it they'll, they'll wait for me wait for you Look at the five virgins. As soon as the door was locked, it was locked. There are people, I, I haven't seen it. I'm not against it. But I haven't seen in the scripture where it says there are two raptures. I haven't. In the case of Noah, when they got into the boat, I didn't see another time where somebody followed them and said, please open the boat. No, that was it. When, when, when Lord's wife 
turned back. There was nothing like, oh, she's a family member. Wait, wait, wait. Until she gets in there. No. Is anyone hearing at all? Is anyone here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma ma I wanted to make sure. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma we are in the season of mercy. The whole world is in the season of mercy. We can choose to enjoy this mercy. The season of grace, the season of mercy. You can sit there, pamper yourself. There are some people when they come and teaching, they're like, oh my God, I like this word, but this woman is hard. Go to the person that's a mediocre. You will not even hear a clean word because they've already compromised. They want people, they want relationship, they want to hang around everyone. It doesn't matter if they're going anywhere or not. Daddy don't give his pearl to show him. Type it in. Daddy does not give pearls to show him. You have to show, study to show. One of the end time strategies it's wrong relationships, unforgiveness and pride, unforgiveness and pride, ungratefulness. I don't even have one minute for all of this, this, this firm and, and parades of the streets. I don't do it and I don't like it. I don't want it. As you're listening, I want you to check, look into your own life. Am I truly ready? If Jesus is coming, will I say, Jesus, wait, let me go finish my overtime? Will I say, Jesus, wait, this, um, I have to go get my clothes from the teller? There are people, no matter what you tell them, it's the word, it's the word, it's the word, they don't study. Then they can tell you five prayer points in one prayer meeting. And you're wondering, this thing you're talking about, we've taught it here. Were you here when we were doing this study? No, they were not. Okay, we should come here, teach, and do everything, you're not available, then you come back and pull us back. No, no time for that. No time for that. Because we've been strict, we're getting even stricter because the time is getting slow and narrow. I want to run with five serious people, 20 serious people, 30 serious people. You're not serious, excuse. I cannot do Lord's wife. I can't, it's costly. Now, one of the things that if, if we will, before we end this class today, I want you to remember is that Lord's wife was part of Lord's family, meaning she started the race, meaning she was running well. What stopped her? Something. Something pulled her back. Something pulled her back. And what is that thing? You can say, oh, it could be this, it could be that. But let me tell you, it doesn't matter what it is. Let's look at Mark chapter 9. Please don't forget these scriptures. Go back and study them. Mark chapter 9, we're going to read from verse 42. Mark chapter 9, verse 42. We've read, these are Dutch scriptures for today. I hope we remember them. All my scribes, no, not all. Miss Novelet is on a retreat. I'm not sure uh, where Miss Mary went. I don't know where she went. Um, Mac 9. So somebody can be a scribe for me. Colette, you do that job good. So you can type the scriptures, please. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Yeah. Colette, you're a moderator on Relationship Institute. That's right. So you can take your rightful place. Mark chapter 9. Okay, yes. Mom. Yes, we've, we've seen Mark chapter 9. We're seeing Mark chapter 9. We, we started with, you know, you have the scriptures. Were you writing or not? I can give you if you don't have them. Yes, please do more. The first scripture we read was Luke 17, 32 to 33. And then Genesis chapter 19. Luke 17, 32, 33. Genesis 19, 26. But then we started reading from verse 19. That should be verse 19. I think 19 or 11, one of those. Um, and then we're looking at Mark nine forty two to fifty. All right. Oh, man. Still start at seventeen to twenty six. We started at seventeen. Thank you, Brother Scott. I knew you were going to help us out. Good job, son. Appreciate that. You're welcome, man. Mark chapter nine forty two. Mark nine forty two. Mm, I think that's too much. 
Anyway, let's start there. Let's start on verse 42. But if anyone turns to the smallest of my followers, if anyone turns even the smallest of my followers away from me, it would be better for him if someone had hung a milestone around his neck and flung him into the deepest part of the sea. Verse 34. If your hand, we should have started on verse 34. If your hand, if your hand turns you away from the things of God. Hey, God. I, don't, I hope somebody is here. No. If your own hand, not even your friend yet, not your boyfriend, not your job, not your husband, not your wife. If your own hand turns you away from the things of God, then you should cut it off. It's better to come into eternal life. It um, mean than to have two hands and be flung into hell. There the worm will not die and the fire will not soothe. If your foot trips you on the path, you should cut it off. It's better to come into eternal life crawling than to have two feet and be flung into hell where the worm will not die and the fire will, will, not, will not be soothed. And if your eyes keep you from seeing clearly, then you should pull it out. It's better to come into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be flung into hell. I like the way they use flung, flung into hell. Verse 49, everyone, I mean, there's so much more to read, but this is the point. What is your excuse? Jesus said, get rid of it. Let's look at passion. Passion will, will make it clearer. Verse 43. If your hand entices you to sin, let it go. Limp and useless. For it is better for you to enter life mean than to have your entire body thrown into hell the place of unquenchable fire. This is where the maggots never die and the fire never goes out. And if your feet lead you into sin, cut it off for it is better to enter crawling mm -hmm. than to have both feet and be flung into hell. This is where the maggots never die and the fire never goes out. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. For it is better to enter eternal life with one eye than to be thrown into hell with two. Now he explains what hell is over and over and over. What are we looking at tonight? Remember Lord's wife. She had to turn back for something that the Bible did not tell us why. What is your excuse? What do you want to turn back for? Who is that person you cannot forgive? Who is that person that has irritated you so much? My question I always ask is, if, you're, if somebody says they're your friend and they're always irritating you, if they irritate you three, four times, at this point, they are not the problem. You are the problem because you've made yourself a victim. That's why I don't. I don't make myself a victim. I can delete somebody on this platform and one hour after they call me, I will talk. On this platform, no, it's a serious place. After here, you can do anything with your life out of here. It doesn't matter. But if you come, we have to talk business and we're serious. Why? Because this is company for me. I want to run my race with those that are running. Porto Timothy, those that are running from a pure heart. There's a lot of mediocrity. One of the things I have made up my mind, especially with all that is happening in this world, is that I'm going to not pick calls that are not necessary. I'm not going to watch everything on social media. I'm going to study what that is asking me to study that season and forget about anything else until I have extra time and I choose to watch something. I'm not going to watch it just because somebody has sent it to me or because it's on my TV or it's, it's floating around on social media. No. Remember Lord's wife. What is the spirit behind Lord's wife? Materialism? Distraction first before materialism. Distraction. Not letting go of the past. 
when you're distracted, you're not letting go of the past, <laughs> you're ready to be left behind. God forbid. That's what we ought to say. And that's the truth. Are you going to cut these things off? Or are you going to hold on to them and then bundle yourself with all the privileges and everything else and end up in hell? No, we cannot do that. We have to cut them off. We have to. I'm so pleased with so many people in the Bill family taking retreats, taking time to build themselves. That's why you don't see a few here. I did hear from a few. I might not call everyone's name because there are a few of them. They're taking personal retreat. It's important. This is the time. This is the time. And look at yourself. Check your own personal life. Lord, if you're coming, what is it that can keep me? I started listening to a book I share with most of us, The Shift. My God. Whew. I planned to go to bed at nine, but I couldn't. I gave two extra hours just to listen to that book so I could listen to the book, The Shift. Move seasons and move with them. A lot of people get in trouble because you, you are in a relationship. A relationship institute. So I talk a lot about relationships here. Naturally, I talk about relationship, but on relationship institute, we double it. Many people, you won't make it to heaven. You, you will bite your husband. If, if you, you think you might, you, you will be pinching your husband or your wife or your friend in hell because they pull you there. No, it's your decision. Nobody, type it in, nobody can make decisions for you. It doesn't matter. Say, oh, they were, I was influenced by them. They pushed me, they pulled me. My dear, I heard this man of God explain this scripture. I loved it. I was like, whoa, I've never heard it explained like this. He said, you know why Jesus said somebody slap his shoulder the other cheek? He said, the reason is simple. It's not possible, first of all, for somebody to slap you. You don't respond. And they keep going ahead to slap you again. He said, but if that happens, then you, out of maybe the pain, slap them back. It's big. He said, that's huge. He said, why? Because it's not even possible that after they've slapped you, they will come back to slap you. Get the point. This is the point. All the time we say, this person made me do this. They really did not. We choose to respond that way. We choose to react that way. All of us. We did. Make a decision as you're here at Relationship Institute. There is no relationship. Be it Mama. What was that Mama that we said? Made Mama Lord's mother not to Mama Susan. Be it Mama Susan. It doesn't matter who. Don't, don't turn back to look to the point where you're left behind. Yes, they already cause you pain. Won't you let go of the pain so you can go to heaven? You've already suffered many hell here on earth because of them. Now, this might not apply to many of us, though. But no matter what it is, co-worker, you will go to hell because of them? No. Let go. Because you didn't have a dad. You didn't have a mom. There was nobody to teach you this or that. Let go of that pain. So you can make it to heaven. You saw it there. You say you cut it off. That scripture is deep. If we had to open it, we will not go. But I'm rounding off. Cut it off. You're the one to cut it off. You, you, you. Every time you read scriptures, most of the time you see it's talking to you. You see, you cut it off. You cut it off. They will not. They want to hang around you. They already know they are mediocres. They know one, two, three. Maybe I'll hear one thing from some sister Sparkle and it'll help me. When I hang around Colette, I'll be blessed. That's why they want to hang around, but they don't want to change. Cut them off. It's Ima, the way you say, very soon I won't have a friend. Have all of them and go to her. All right. Any questions? I'm done. It's serious. Serious matter. That's why I don't, I don't complain. I came to tell us exactly how I understand it to be. On Friday, those who had Friday prayer, you heard what daddy showed us. He said, COVID-19 has become a distraction for the end time preparation. People are focused on, 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 on talking about COVID-19, doing everything around COVID-19, 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 COVID-19. And then you don't have time to pray. You don't have time to study. That's the only way you prepare yourself, by staying in the word. My papa said it this morning. The only way you can be strong is by eating in the natural 
you don't eat physical food, you will not be strong in the spiritual. If you keep reading your Bible as a literature, you're not eating it, making it yours, developing spiritual muscles, you'll be weak. Yes, Papa Scott. Uh, my first. When she started well, she ran with her family until she got to the place where she had to turn back. Don't let anything turn you back to the world. Don't let anything turn you back to a lifestyle you know you ought not to be living. It doesn't matter who. There's nobody worth going to hell for. We saw that in Mark 9, um, verse 42 to 50. He said, I cut it off. I didn't say that. Cut it off. You and I know definitely he's not talking about physical body parts. Because physical body parts typically should not push you to go to hell. He's talking about people, situations, and things you could not handle. He said, let it go. Cut it off with me. Stay away from them. Cut it off with me. Pray to daddy and let daddy handle it. Be wise. It's the end time. Remember, every time the end time or the rapture is, is being exemplified, it talks about Noah and Lord. So check the activities that happen around them and know what to expect. We said last week, you're not going to freeze because they didn't freeze. They lived a clean life they live their in bracket classic christian life daily living until they act onto the fire we're not in trouble living for daddy as a matter of fact this is the time to do everything to the best for him we're training people train them with the best material best information you know you you are teaching your children teach them with the best attitude best everything teach them discipline them love them make sure they are fine but then, don't forget, you're not going to look back. Looking back is costly. It's very costly. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Um, Amen. I've said it. Personally, I'm streamlining who I talk with on the phone and how many minutes I talk with people. I'm streamlining it. I've been streamlining it. I'm streamlining it even more. Lily, I'll tell somebody, um, I think we have overspoken. Can we talk again another time? And I'll turn the phone off. Not that I'll tell people why they are talking, no. They will, they will agree. The truth is, you don't, you don't know how much you're the one that has set the mediocre standard for your life until you start sending, setting a better one. The people you think, if you tell them, mm, can we talk later, they'll be mad. Tell them, you see, they will agree with you. They will, two, three times, they will. All the excuses you're giving, you're the problem. You're the one that has set the low standards. It's not the people around you. Please do relationships differently and enjoy your relationships. Amen. 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 Way that I, I don't qualify for mercy until I ask. Yes. I, and I can limit God's mercy. That is mercy in my life. I have to set a standard for my life for others to follow. Not let them dictate the standard. Uh, dictate the standard for me. Um, I have to ask Daddy for a strategy on how to to evangelize to my family members. Strategy, strategy to use. And COVID nineteen and YouTube should not be a distraction. That is it. Go in peace. Stay focused on his love for you, focus on his love for you, eat the word, eat healthy, remember, you are made, make sure you are rapture ready, make sure you are rapture ready, for some people, you can literally say, I am rapture ready, and enjoy your week. Amen. 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 Amen.